Hello and welcome to this writemem.co.uk tutorial on BGP Multipath. Essentially, BGP Multipath is a way of load balancing across two links with BGP. Many other routing protocols do this by default, um, but with BGP, what you get is we have a route over here, 10.200.00 slash 24, which is being advertised to Paris via both of these links. BGP's default behavior is to just use one of these links. So Paris will just use either this link or the gig one link to, uh, to send its packets over to London for the destined 10.200.00 slash 24 network. Let's just show you that in operation first. So I'll bring up the Paris router and we'll take a look at the uh, routing table. So I've already got this configured with BGP um, and we can see that only one link is being used here. So to get to the 10.200.00 network, we're going by the 192.168.02 um, link, which is the bottom one here. So this link is being completely unutilized. So we can see in the BGP summary that it's up, but it's not, um, it's not actively being used for that particular um, 10.200.00 slash 24 prefix. Okay, so just to show you the failover, um, so that we can see 192.168.1.2 becoming the active neighbor, uh, we'll, we'll break the currently working link. So, just do that by shooting down the interface, uh, which is gig one on this router. Uh, sorry, gig zero zero on this router. Okay, you can see that that's gone down. The neighbor's gone down here. And if we look at the routing table now, we can see that the other route is in use. So the 192.168.1.2. So that's now the top link that's in use. And the bottom link is, well, it's actually not being used at all, so we shut it down. Cool, let's bring that interface back up again and put it back to how it was. bottom link is in use again and the top link is just waiting there in case of failure. Let's get into the configuration of multipath. It's really simple. You just go under your current BGP configuration, uh, AS100 in my case, right, yeah. And we just do maximum paths two. And there we go. Everything should work fine um, from this point forward, and both links should be in use. Let's take a look. Ah. Looks like we can only see one again. Let's try clearing the PGP process. So that brings down both neighbors. Brings it back up again. Sometimes we have to do this to get it to um, do what we want. To wait a few moments for that to repopulate the routing table. And there we go. We can still see one neighbor inside um, uh, inside here. So I'll let you in on a little bit of a secret. I deliberately put a route map on the top link so that uh, those links are not equal cost. And the reason I did that is to show that unequal cost links um, will not be considered for load balancing. So that's the reason why we've got just this particular neighbor here, 192.168.02. As we know, the bottom link there. 
Um, that is the only one that's being con considered BGP right now. The top one can't be um, multipathed because it's not equal cost. So we can see where I've configured that um, in the BGP rib. So the local preference that I've set on the next hop, 192.168.1.2. So I've set that to a, a local preference of 10, the default is 100, and uh, higher is more preferred. So we can see the little carrot symbol down here that for the 10.200.00 network, this is the preferred route. So let's remove the local preference configuration that I've put on there. And we should see that um, the load balancing begins to work because the paths are now equal cost. Let's do that right now. Okay, and we'll clear the BGP process again. It's not the kind of thing you do in a production environment, but obviously this is just the, the GNS3 lab, so I'm quite happy to bring down the BGP neighbors. And there we go, perfect. We see two routes for the 10.200.00 network. Um, and that is what it should look like when you're load balancing with BGP multipath. Uh, we can take a look at a few different locations. So that's obviously in the routing table. Have a look in the BGP rib and see what that looks like. You can see for the 10 200 network here, we've got the, the, the first next hop and the second next hop. And you see a little M there, which is um, denotes that that's a multipath um, neighbor as well so that they're both being used for this particular next hop, uh, for that particular network, sorry. Um, and we can also look in probably the most important place, really, in, in the actual forwarding table itself in the FIB, by doing a SHA IP CEF. And basically, if we see it in here, it's the route just there, then, you know, we've got two different destinations there for that, for that one prefix. So, that's good. That's um, that proves that we're equal cross load balancing there. Right. So I've got another scenario, example B. I'm not going to configure this one. Um, let me just zoom out a little. I'm not going to configure this one, but just to kind of give you a bit more of an understanding of how this might work in the real world. As much as a valid configuration as the previous one was, you might see this one more often, where instead of just one London router. Uh, we've got two London routers now. Maybe London's a large office and it requires uh, well, it requires redundancy, essentially. So if one router fails, there's another one there to back it up. What we might see in this example is a network from the LAN. We could use the same one, 10 200 0, 0, 24 would be advertised to the two London routers. And then the London routers would um, advertise down both these separate links to the parish router. And then if we had, you know, multipath enabled on the par parish router, it would work exactly the same as the previous example. Even though they're two different routers, it makes no odds to the BGP multipath. It's just going to send one packet down gig zero and one packet down gig one, just the same as it would have done in the previous. If we want a multipath to work both ways, then we'd have to configure it on London as well. We, we only configured it on Paris. Um, so only routes that Paris received would get the multipath treatment. That's pretty much it. So I hope that helped you with the fundamentals of equal cost load balancing using BGP multipath. As with most things, the explanation takes far longer than the configuration. But thanks for watching.